Now, our reach in this tour extends across to France with Cadell Evans' manager joining us now, Jason Backer. Thanks for coming in, Jase. Thanks, Thanks Welcome, man. Nice time. You've been with Cadell since 2010. Yep. which was wonderful, just ahead of his biggest successes. Been speaking to him much or trying to kind of keep out of his way a little bit? Uh, look, I talk to him a bit when necessary, but really I'm, I'm not a fan or there to get in his way. I think he likes to be focused and they don't have a lot of time with guys, as Nick would know, during the tour. So every, every now and then a little message and if he gets back to me, might expand a little bit, but it's pretty short and sharp communication. So straight up, what's his feeling that you get that ha- the way he's travelling? Uh, st- I think he went into the race really confident. Yep. Um, I think he felt the Giro, you know, he achieved his goals. He got the outcomes he needed from the Giro. I think he rolled the dice on that one. He felt he didn't have any option. Um, I think obviously he'd be disappointed with the, the team time trial. I think there's no doubt about that. And he's, you know, but moved on from that. Obviously had a tough day when uh, put to the sword by the Sky Boys. But, yeah. you know, he fought back well. And, uh, you know, I think it's, he's well positioned to, to keep going strong from here. As an athlete that's had extraordinary physical and race success over the last decade, I think Australian fans have had a bit of a a curious relationship with Mm. him. He's not the predictable athlete. Mm. We know he's um, a little bit more reserved. And what did you know of him before you were his manager? And how has that changed? Uh, I think what I'm really... What I hope in the last few years has happened that people have got to know Cadell a bit better as a person. I think the, the broader media focus on Cadell has been good for him rather than just the same old cycling media, the same questions. I think that's we've got to, to understand a bit more about Cadell and the person he is. Um, yeah, I think you, Cadell's not the, you know, he there's a little bit of a barrier there initially and once you, he, you earn his trust and, and likewise, then I find him you know, quite a funny sort of, I know he's a quirky guy, but I, I enjoy his company, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I've right, ridden with him when I've been in Lavigno on training camp and he's incredibly articulate and interesting mm. and has mm. a great conversation. But we've seen him be, well, certainly even in the lead up to his win in 2011, a bit anxious, a bit defensive and some um, perhaps amusing footage on YouTube of him being a bit defensive about his, his pet. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, and that's, that's, I think... Yeah, you know, I don't think that really accurately re- reflects it. I think cycling's quite unique like that. I think every other sport's really stage managed really tightly and coaches and players get a chance to cool down, calm down, think. They have media managers telling them what to say, what are the questions. Cycling's not like that. Cycling's very raw. You have to think quickly. There's emotion. You've, you, know, you might have won- just lost the tour and 20 seconds later he's got to face the world's media. So it's incredibly challenging. Uh, I think people you know, don't probably understand that, but... Um, you know, and you just wonder about how much training and preparation he's had to deal with media. Mm. Um, but I think that's changing. Yeah. Oh, of course it is. I remember when he came to Lotto the first year, he'd been with the East Germans at Telecom. That was a tough gig for him. Mm. You know, there's Ulrich and Zabel. And I remember a story, Cadell gets on the bus the first day in Telecom, sits in the front seat as Cadell does. And anyway, Eric Zaba walked in and went, hey, that's my seat. I've been there for 10 years. But he didn't understand. But now, he, you know, once he got in with a few Aussies and he was great. He's a good bloke. Yeah, you need to know player. him, that's yeah, all. Yeah, no, look, he enjoys a beer like anyone else, enjoys a red wine. He is yep. a good fella. He's, he's different. He is unique. But, um, yeah, look, I think people are understanding Cadell a lot better. They're respecting that. And, and I'm, look, I, and I think one of the great things out of the Olympics, even though we didn't win the gold in the Olympics, you know, Cadell spent a fair bit of time with Shiro Grady, and they're obviously very different people. But I think as they're mellowing, <laughs> is that an obvious statement, yeah, is it? Oh, yeah. no, no, so, but I different. think from Cadell, he really enjoyed his time. And I think as going along, everyone's mellowing and mm. respecting each other. That's a really good thing to see. Yeah. Also, the move to BMC was just absolutely fantastic for him. Mm. I think... To know that you're supported, I think that was my vibe that I picked up from him, that he felt so relieved, like someone said, we understand you, we're here for you. Mm. You saw how extraordinarily his team rode for him in 2011, you know, constantly just being vigilant, kind, patient, and he seemed so relaxed, you know, it was wonderful. Well, his time was up at Lotto, you could see they were, they were grooming Vanderbrook to come in and slowly show him the door, and when he got in at BMC, he was a leader, and it's great. Now he's got Alan Piper in there too, that'd be good for him. Yeah, I think so, I think it's a, it's a great match. Um, I I think it speaks volumes for Cadell, you know, when he won the, the World Championships in Mendricio 2009, I think BMC, it's on record as saying they didn't think that he would come then, you know, they, we won't be able to afford you, and he said, no, nothing's changed, you know, it's the, the same principle. Certainly got a great strong team behind him who believe in him. Let's have a listen to what, some of the words from his uh, team director, John Lelang. He says he's got plenty of fight. He is still uh, competitive, even if we know that our objective to be there uh, on the highest step of the podium is uh, far away now, but we are still there. There is still two weeks to go. One nice mountain stage today, a time trial next week, and then the last week from the Ventoux until Ancy Semnos where everything can happen. So 
will be fighting every day. And, uh, you know, you know, Cadell, he's there. He's a, he's a fighter. We've seen some of his own words tweeted and so on that maybe I need to reassess my goals this tour. First into the top ten, then maybe push for the top five. Is is that realistic? I think so. I think after the time trial on Wednesday night, I, I think Cadell should probably be in the top ten by then. And then hopefully he can edge his way forward. He's a, you know, and we know how uh, determined he is. Yep. And I think people will be looking over their shoulders and you, know, you just never know in sport, do you? Yeah. You were involved in helping giving a bit of secret intel at the top of a climb a couple of years ago. Can you tell us about that? Well, I was a, I was a yeah, Tour de France rookie and uh, I was at uh, the Galibier. I was about halfway up and BMC, to their credit, would text me every morning or call and see, you know, how are you placed, Jason? You got a good vantage point and <laughs> knowing this uh, Aussie who was really out of his, out of his depth and um, one morning I started feeling comfortable in the cycling surrounds and said, you know, yeah, I'm good, got a good spot, you know. It's, some interesting winds up here, some crosswinds. I'd heard a bit of, bit of the cycling vernacular <laughs> and uh, just thought I'll enter into the spirit of it all. And Anyway, I got a, uh, mess, I got a call come through and didn't know the number and it, it was John Lalong. And um, he said, Jason, tell us about the crosswinds you just mentioned to George's Lu- Luchinger, the media manager. And I sort of immediately froze and <laughs> sort of, I did that one and I, I didn't know east, west, north, north or south. And I just said, oh, they, they seem to be abating a little bit. John, I, there's not so they, they, they've eased a little bit now, and I quickly turned off the phone and put it in the back pocket. And I, thought I, I nearly stuffed Australia's first ever chance to win the Tour de France. I think if I gave them the wrong information, because the peloton was already on the way, and I you faltered the race plan. Oh yeah, I played just, my part. Just quickly, um, despite his quirkiness, etc., um, we kind of got the feeling that. Cadell really thought it all made sense once he had these huge crowds greeting him after he came back after winning in, in 2011. Yeah, that's a really, I think that's a really good summation of it. I think he, he walked onto... Who would have thought one day that Cadell would walk onto the stage at Fed Square with 30-odd thousand people there and just sort of raise his arms in mm. triumph? And he did it really naturally. I just think he yeah. just felt really comfortable with it. So... I was really proud, yeah. Good stuff, mate. We could talk forever about Cadell. We want you to wish him well on our behalf. Send him sure. a text, won't you, please? Um, <laughs> Got a gift for you, mate. Oh, there you go. Goodies. Green Edge. Thanks, Nick. Thanks very much. Cap and Vino.